episode of the podcast with your host, Dina Adams. I am here today with Ashley Holmes, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Um, I'm not one that has ever experienced a lot of the things that Ashley is going to be sharing about today, and but I know there's many people in my life who have, and so I wanted to bring her in to share her heart, to share her story, because I think there's a lot of people that can really relate to her and to who she, how she serves people. And you may be one of those people listening today that you've been saying, God, I really need someone and I just need you to show me. And I feel like, oh, I get chills. And I feel like this is someone who's really going to be able to be an answer to that for many people. So, um, Ashley, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm excited for this conversation. And like you said, so many people are struggling with this issue. So I hope to shed some light and some awareness and some hope. Uh, that's such a key word is hope, right? Because we we will lose sight of that in the darkness that we're going through. So I truly believe that you'll be able to shed shed some light and hope for people as well going through this. So Ashley, if you would please introduce who you are, what you do, um, and for everyone listening, Ashley is in Canada. Um, I'm finding I'm getting a very wide group of people from Canada, so it's been really fun and interesting and just such kind people. I love it. Um, so Ashley, if you go ahead and introduce yourself and share a little bit more with the audience of who you are, what you do, and who you're serving from this space. Sure. I'm Ashley Holmes, and I'm a holistic fertility coach. So I help women who are struggling with trying to conceive to connect mind, body, and spirit and bring the body back into balance and alignment and relieve the stress that infertility is placing on their system. Mm, I love that. I, I think it's there's something about infertility that so many people can't relate to. Um, even if they know someone who's going through it, unless you go through it, you truly don't understand the emotions, the drain on your body, the drain on yourself mentally, the drain and the stress in your family and all that that entails. So, um, thank you for what you do. I know so many people need that support on that journey that they're walking. I personally am not one who have experienced that, but I, like I said, I do have friends who have gone through that and have struggled through that. Um, so I'm looking forward to this conversation today. What I'd like to do is get started with your story and what it is that you've gone through in order to get to this place of that this is what you do to serve others. Absolutely. So I was in my late 20s when I started trying to conceive. And like so many women, I thought this was going to happen easily. It was going to happen quickly. And that wasn't the case. So I started the journey of going to the fertility clinic and doing all the tests and the procedures and all of these things. And it took a lot of time and energy and effort and felt like a science experiment. and. Truly, I was blessed with twins, but it was not a road I wanted to go down again or something I would put myself through again. And I was given the diagnosis of unexplained infertility. So I really didn't have any hope that this was something I could do naturally, that this is something I was capable of on my own without medical assistance. And so I thought, okay, I had boy girl twins and just be happy and grateful for that and I was but a piece of me always wanted to know why and I feel like by incorporating holistic practices in the route that I went down I did manage to conceive very easily very quickly within six months and really took back my power and really learned how to nourish myself in the optimal way for me and to give my body what it truly needs and to listen to my body and to tune into my body. That's such like, it's such a beautiful story. And it, I can't help but like my heart hurts because 
I'm I am someone who didn't want kids and I ended up with five. I've conceived four myself and my husband had a daughter when we got together. And to know that there's people out there who desire this, who yearn for motherhood and it can't happen, like it just breaks my heart because I can't imagine the level of emotions that you go through when you want something and you basically feel like you've been told you're never going to get it. And it's your heart's deepest desire. And it's something that our bodies are supposed to be created to do. And one one phrase I've heard people say um, when they're going through this, and maybe you can help shed some light on this for others, is I don't feel like I'm like, I feel like a piece of my womanhood is not there. and this is paraphrasing so many comments. Um, but how do you, someone who isn't going through this, but maybe they're supporting someone, they are part of that support system for someone who is going through this. How do you help them be able to not so much comprehend and understand as though they're that other person, but understand from a disconnected place? that there's part of you that you feel is almost like you weren't born with, right? There's a part of you that feels like there's something wrong with me or there's something missing or this grief that I can't have this and other people really can't comprehend. How do you help those support people through that kind of thing? when they're trying to be supportive of someone going through this. I think it's so important to reinforce that they're not broken, that they don't need fix, that there's nothing wrong with them, that, you know, they are exactly where they are meant to be and experiencing what they're meant to experience at this point in time and that there is a way to find peace and surrender within that and So that it's not such a struggle. So it doesn't feel so forceful in that you're trying to make this happen because it's truly not making it happen that allows for it to happen. It's kind of breaking those, those walls and those energy blocks down to really just know and trust and release the timeline of when and how and know that when you put the energy and the effort an attention there that it will happen when the time is right, but you can't force it to be. That's such a good point. And I think as a support person to someone else, it can feel really difficult to be able to say to someone and remind them that they're not broken, that this is how it is. And I will support you however I can without the other person feeling like, well, you don't understand anyway, so how can you even say that to me? And I feel like there's a lot of this, um, there's a lot of resentment in relationships when there's a woman who has been able to have kids to a woman who isn't able and desires. And the one who has is attempting to support their friend. And it's, there's a, there's like this feeling on the supportive side of it where we can't comprehend, we can't understand, we don't know what it feels like. And almost as if no matter what we say, it may make the other person who is going through this feel worse. And so it can be very challenging to know how to support and encourage someone who's going through that. So kind of want to shift gears into, you know, (laughs) excuse me, maybe your story a little bit. And, and hopefully this will be supportive of others who are walking this journey now that you've been through. Um, You said at one point, like you were wanting to have kids, you were trying to have kids. And 
this, you know, you're going through all of these things and feeling like a science experiment because it's all the poking and the prodding and the testing and all of these things. And it be- start, does start to feel like a science experiment instead of this natural thing that you feel is supposed to happen in your body. And so I, I'd like if you could to share a bit about maybe some of the emotions that you felt. Because I think a lot of people, until they hear someone else say, I felt like this, these were some of the things that I experienced during that time. And maybe dig a little bit deeper, be a little bit more um, descriptive of what that felt like for you. And I think it will really help support other women in being like, oh, maybe that's something that I can relate to. And they won't feel so alone. Definitely. And you hit the... Nail on the head there by saying alone because I felt very alone at the time when I was going through this and didn't feel like I had the support I wanted or needed. And every month sort of felt like a loss because, you know, you were doing all of the things down to an art, down to a science, exactly as instructed. And, you know, it wasn't happening, it wasn't working, and feeling quite hopeless, quite defeated. You know, and thinking that it, for m- in my circumstance, I felt like it all rested on my shoulders because the issue was with me and not my husband. So it was like, if this doesn't happen, then, you know, it's my fault. And it felt like a large burden to carry and something heavy that weighed on me. Did you, did you feel guilty? Absolutely. When it didn't happen. There, were, there is a lot of, shame and guilt Mm. that goes along with infertility and it's important to process and really take care of those emotions because often they're held within and they're kept within and our organs are housing our emotions so you can use yoga you can use meditation you can use holistic practices to work through these things so you're not energetically holding on to them in your body That's a really good point, which brings me to another question I wanted to ask is a lot of my audience, um, because I'm very strong in my faith in Christ, and that's my foundation. Yet I hear someone talking about the holistic side of things and the natural side of things. And a question that would come up for me is, because of my faith, is this really someone I could work with? And so I'd love to know, like, how is it that you because I know you work with anyone. It's not, um, it doesn't have to do with your faith, right? Like you'll work with anyone who needs this support. And so maybe share like what you would say to someone who says, you know, I don't know if I can do this because of my faith. I don't know if this is a practice I can do. How did you help them make that decision for themselves in that, in that space to decide whether or not this is a good fit for them? Really, I invite them to my free community to see what it is I do, meditations I offer, and to just offer the peace of being open. Maybe you haven't explored this side of yourself or this part of yourself before, but it really just allows you to feel connected to yourself as you're going through this. So you're not disconnected, so you don't feel lost, you don't feel hopeless to really anchor in to your faith and trust in yourself and in your body so that you're not begrudging your body, that you're not, you know, talking negatively to yourself in your mind because this hasn't happened yet. And I think that's a really great way. Excuse me. And this is where I want to mention um, in the, in the description of this podcast, you can find a link to um, Ashley's free classes and to her Facebook group and different things so that if you're if you are someone who is going through this and you're trying to find support from somewhere and you think this might be a good fit, um, you can check it out. There's no obligation to stay. There's no obligation to purchase anything. 
Yet Ashley really opens up this space for anyone who's seeking support and needing others to walk with in a kindness, in a loving space on this journey, because it is so extremely difficult on so many levels. Um, yes. And what I'd like the- to oh, go ahead. offering is that it is taking care of all of those levels. It is taking care of your nutrition. It is taking care of your mindset. It is taking care of your body. It is taking care of how you're breathing, how you're handling stress, ways that you can use and tools you can use to cope with the stress so that you have some ease and peace and calm within when things aren't turning out as you expected and to really shift that attention and focus to take that self-care for yourself and to put yourself first because that is often really hard for us to do as well but so important it is so important and you say talk you're talking about self-care and putting yourself first and you did this after through fertility treatments you you have twins and then after that you get pregnant without fertility treatments, correct? So yes. girl, let's let's talk a bit more about this because a lot of people will say, well, I have kids. I have little ones. I don't have time for self-care and I'm very big on self-care. So I'd like for you to share what, what do you mean by self-care in this space specifically? Because if you already have kids, you don't have a ton of, time to yourself unless it's during nap time and while the kids are sleeping or different things like that when you have a babysitter. So help help some of these women who are in that place maybe they have had kids, they're trying again, they're going to the fertility treatments. Give us a picture of what this self-care looks like that you went through during that time that brought you to being able to conceive after you had already done fertility treatments and this time you you ended up not doing. I feel like that has been the biggest shift in my life was to prioritize myself, my well-being, and to learn how to do that in the optimal way for me. Because what is best for me isn't necessarily what is best for anybody else. So it's for you to become your own teacher and your own guide and to really realize how you feel after you eat certain foods, what could it be inflaming your system, and to take attention and notice of how all sorts of things in your day-to-day life are affecting you. And as busy as we all are, I'm a mom of three as well, but I still make that a priority and it is non-negotiable. Every day I will get on my mat And it doesn't matter what I do, but as soon as I'm on my mat, I don't want to get off my mat. So it's just being a practice for me. And it's not that everybody has to do yoga every day, but I meditate every day and I've made it a practice to do that and to wake up before my kids and to start my day that way and to move through my day with that intention and in that mindset versus mom and, you know, starting the day like getting pull out of bed and go, 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 go. It's a really different sort of way to shape your day. And it truly is the small habits that make the biggest changes and have the biggest effect in your life. And you may think, oh, how could that truly impact me so much? But it will. It creates a giant ripple effect in all the areas of your life. Right. I think that speaks to intentionality, right? I think so much of our life, and this is something I speak on all the time, is we get stuck in this juggling act of life and we're juggling all the plates, right? We're trying to keep all the plates in the air because we just have to keep going. And we don't give our, we don't make one of those plates ourselves. We don't take the time to put down all the plates and actually be very present intentionally in the areas of life that are going to actually help us thrive, we end up being very reactive to everything going on around us. And in that, we lose, we become very passive and we become very stressed and very anxious and we stop taking care of ourselves and we put all of these things above 
our own well being that should actually come after. Like, we can't pour into others if we're empty. We don't have much to give. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's some people going, yeah, that all sounds good and well. And I've tried all the things. What makes Ashley and the way Ashley serves people in this space and what you did to be able to conceive this way, what makes it different than what other people like? How How is this different in the way that people are probably thinking I've tried all the things already outside of fertility? I've tried self-care. I've tried these things. What makes how you help people different? My program will change the rest of your life not only with helping you to try to conceive, but to have the best way to nourish yourself. I use Ayurveda. So everyone is born with an inborn constitution. So to nourish yourself in an optimal way, there are yoga poses that serve you best. There is breath work that serves you best. You really will be set up for the rest of your life to optimally know how to look after yourself in the best way, if that's what you're seeking. But it means that you step up to the plate and you say, yes, I want this for myself. You know, I want this to be a priority and I want to know how to live a long and healthy life. And there are many, many options out there, but this isn't a quick fix. This is looking at long term and what you want. And I can just say from experience with my twins, it was stressful getting pregnant. It was a stressful pregnancy. It was an emergency C-section and it was a long recovery. Whereas when I conceived naturally, it was an easy pregnancy, even though I was deemed geriatric at the time. My water broke. I gave birth naturally and I was back at baby me yoga 10 days later. Night and day difference. So really knowing what you are truly capable of and allowing that for yourself and tapping into that inner wisdom and that inner power. It sounds like to me what you're saying is you work with your clients to help them figure out what works best for them instead of giving them a cookie cutter, everybody needs to do it this way kind of thing. Is that accurate? That is accurate. There is no cookie cutter. I meet my clients one-to-one where they're at and design a program for them that suits them best, that is going to help them in the best way. And that's why I feel like there's not enough support out there. There is not enough that is truly going to help you. There is all the medical support and intervention that you want out there. But if that isn't working for you and on all sorts of levels, maybe it's time to dig a little bit deeper and see what else is truly going on. And you pointed out too that your reason for infertility was unexplained, correct? Yes. So it's now not everybody's is that way. There are many people who there is a specific reason that they cannot conceive. It is diagnosed and this may not be for you because maybe there's something going on that the doctors are like, there's absolutely because of these things, your body can't get pregnant, right? And we understand there are situations like that or, you know, whatever the reason may be. So understanding, you know, working with Ashley isn't for everyone, yet there are many people who are going through something where it is unexplained or the diagnosis they have is something that potentially can be reversible if they have the support to walk through the healing of their body and the different things like that. So if you're in doubt and if Ashley's story resonated with you and you're like, oh, she's been through this, I just need to talk to someone. Who understands because I'm sure there are many people who feel like I have all these doctors, but they've never even been through it. So I don't have anyone that relates to me. And sometimes I think just having the support of someone who understands can shift the entire trajectory of the of the healing that you're working through. And one of the things that you said that I want to recap is. This is a lifestyle change. This isn't, oh, I'm going to do these couple things and now I'm going to be able to get pregnant and then I can go back to the way I did things before. That you focus 
on healing from a internal, physical, emotional, spiritual, entire person healing space. And so it is for it is not for the faint of heart, which infertility treatments in itself are not for the faint of heart either. It is no, a, but it's, it's like, like if you process. can set yourself through that, then what I am offering is really just so much more gentle and loving and caring and not invasive or, you know, you are going to feel like yourself and you're going to come back to your true self. And when I was experiencing it, I felt disconnected and on an emotional roller coaster and just couldn't wait for this to be over. Like, I just didn't want to be doing it anymore. But I thought it was the only way. And I'm here to offer an alternative, either alongside it or on its own, because there is just so much more that we really can do if we're open to it. What was the time frame between when you started fertility treatments to the time you conceived your twins? I would say like 18 months. So I th- so I think about that. That's that's a very long time. Like if you think of an 18 month old, that'll give you a good perspective of how long 18 months actually is. And you ca- after you had your twins and you started this new process, right? So you started this new way of this holistic way of how you're going to conceive the next time. When you s- made that decision and started the shift Till you conceived with your third child. What was that time frame? It was within six months. And with me really not altering or doing a whole lot of extra things. You know, like this wasn't me leaving work to go to appointments. This wasn't me doing, you know, all of these things that are part and parcel of using a clinic. and. What I'm offering, you can do from the comfort of your own home. And as many women go to acupuncture to help them to conceive, you can use yin yoga in the same way to affect the meridian lines within your body. And that does not involve needles. You know, this is just you being in tune with your body and with your breath and actually, you know, coming out of fight or flight mode and moving into rest and digest mode because that is what your body really needs in order to conceive. I just, I like, um, and I think like what, what I feel in listening to you as you talk about the first time you were attempting to conceive 18 months, you can hear in, I'm super, like, I'm super, I'm a highly sensitive person. And so like, I could just feel the stress and the emotions that are coming going through all of these things. And then when you start talking about the six months leading into conceiving your third child, there's so much calmness around that, that it just, it's, I am all for people doing whatever they need to do in the way they feel they need to do it in order to take best care for them and their family and however they want to do that. And it's nice to know that there's another option for people because I think a lot of times people believe this is, well, this is all I know. So this is all, this is the only option I believe there is because even in their research, you can't always find the people that are doing other things in order to help you and you don't know what you don't know. And so I truly hope this conversation brings awareness and hope to people that, okay, I've tried fertility treatments. I've tried acupuncture. I've tried these other things that are pretty well known and helping me conceive. And maybe you haven't been able to, or maybe you haven't been able to again. And you might be going through the same thing with as Ashley did, where it was an unexplained infertility. And this might be that thing that says, okay, I've got it in me to try one more thing. And if you're ready to put in the effort and the work that it takes to do all of that, 
shifting your lifestyle, hopefully going th- working, you know, if Ashley is a good fit for you, going through that would be a much less stressful process than and hopefully get you the outcomes that you're looking for. Now, I know that there's no way to guarantee anyone's going to get pregnant because they work with you. However, this is to help women in a natural way to potentially be able to conceive if they're having infertility issues. It's not saying this is the end all be all. And I don't want people to, to like go into this with this um, miss, I don't want people to misunderstand the conversation, especially if you haven't heard the whole thing and you're jumping in and listening to pieces of the podcast. We want to make sure that, you know, people understand this is a way, another alternative option that you can potentially be able to, you know, move through that infertility. So I think it's also important to remember that what we do now affects our egg quality three to four months from now. So really being mindful and paying attention. And, you know, sometimes we think, oh, this doesn't matter, or I'm not pregnant this month. It doesn't matter. But all the little things that you do to care for yourself truly and to nourish nourish yourself every day really do matter. And I think that's a really good, very important key. I think that's like been one of my favorite things I've heard through this podcast, I've had many, but when you say where things are in three to four months is contingent on what happened three to four months prior is so important because we truly will think that, oh, I do this one thing today and it's not often, so it's really not a big deal. Yet it impacts our overall quality of life. And we don't recognize how those things impact our physical being, our internal organs, our all the inner workings of things. And things can look really good. That doesn't mean they are. Absolutely. And also to the same effect, you know, what nourishes me isn't what nourishes you. And to go with the trends that are healthy, may not actually be serving you and you may not be getting the nutrients that you need from the food that are actually going to help your reproductive organs. And I think that's a really good point to make when it comes to nourishment because the other thing we also think is my blood work's coming back normal. You know, your basic things, right? On a you know, you go to your yearlies, you do all these things outside of the infertility just as everyday things, we might think everything's fine. But a perfect example is I went to a natural practitioner and they said, you know, I've been going to doctors for years trying to find out what's wrong with my digestive system. And everybody keeps saying, oh, well, this, we don't know why you have it. This, we don't know why it's happening. This, we don't understand it. And none of them put two and two together and understood, like never looked at my history, like a long history of things. Yet after that time with her, with my natural practitioner, she goes, your digestive system is at a point that you're, she's like, you're malnourished. You're not absorbing nutrients. You're, you know, all these things. So your body's reacting in this way. And so she goes, "Um," and I hadn't told her yet, like some of my diagnoses and she was able to pinpoint everything and even asked me if I had been diagnosed with other things prior and dealt with other things previously. Yet here I am living life every day, just, you know, going about and not realizing that I'm taking, even though I'm trying to do really well and nourish my body in certain ways, the underlying root cause of things was not being addressed in the medical industry. I couldn't get them to listen for years, like 20 plus years. And she's like, because of that, now it's so destroyed. Now here's where we are. And it was a real eye opener for me because it made me realize that things that have been happening, even though I was trying to get support and trying to get help and trying to figure out why I was feeling these things, it was getting blown off. And I think it's important to recognize that when we're trying to 
get pregnant, our ability to absorb nutrients and have what nourishes our bodies so that everything can function properly, so our eggs are healthy, so our eggs are where they need to be and our body's functioning the right way, that's a very, like, that is dire to our bodies being able to, to sustain and grow another human being. And for the life of me, I cannot imagine it was hard enough carrying one at a time. My first one was actually triplets and I lost two, but I've never had to carry multiple births for a long period of time. And I realized there were things when I looked back, I realized what had gone on in my life at that time prior to me getting pregnant And in the early part of my pregnancy, before I knew I was pregnant, why I lost the other two. I knew, I know exactly what happened. And we don't realize that what we put in our body or what we don't put in our body, how we care for ourselves, the things that we put our body through, we don't realize how detrimental that is to us being able to have a baby. Yes. There is so many things that are going on that are truly affecting you. So taking control of what you can control and doing what you can for yourself is so crucial. And you will feel so much better moving through it when you are more regulated, when you are more calm, when you are more peaceful. And every little bump along the way doesn't throw you completely off course. I just want to thank you so much for sharing your story today. I think it's very powerful. And um, I believe that there will be many people who will gain light and hope from this conversation. And I think it's so, um, I think it's something that's not talked about enough. I feel like a I feel like a lot of people feel like they can't talk about it. Do you experience that, that you run into people that feel that way? Absolutely. And I just want to bring voice to the fact that it's important that you have someone to talk to and someone to support you. And if that's not your spouse, then it's really important to find that support somewhere else and to be mindful that your spouse is going through it with you, alongside of you. And as much as they want to be and do your everything, they're also going through the motions with you. So to put that on them as well, you know, isn't realistic, really. I think that's such a good point. We do often put a lot of pressure on our spouses just in daily life in general to be our support. And we have our expectations of how someone should support us and we forget sometimes that they have their own things that they're going through not that they don't want to be supportive but maybe they don't they don't have the skill set to support us in the way we need or maybe they're not at that capacity because they're going through their own stuff and so they can't be a support because they don't know how and they're going through their own feelings and their own struggles with that and I'm, I'm sure, I know we've talked about women being um, infertile, being told that they can't have kids. What happens if someone comes to you and says, we can't have kids because my husband, they say it's my husband. And I don't know if you work with clients like that or if you have somewhere to refer them to, but I can see how on the flip side of that, there's a lot of those feelings for the men I mean, I can't imagine what that's like for them either, Um, but it brings a whole nother dynamic to this whole entire situation. And so um, I was just curious if you work with those couples or if you have somewhere that you can refer them out to if that's not something you do. My heart and soul is truly with the women and I have compassion for the men and I always say and I have been asked like can my husband do these practices with me and I say yes like there is benefit to everybody for what I'm doing just for overall health and well-being they're welcome to join you and I think that's a really good way to connect at a time that is maybe taking you further apart instead of bringing Mm -hmm. you closer together 
But yes, I do have people I can refer out to as well. I think that's so great. Being a resource for others, when if it's not something that you do, I think is so important and still another way that you can still support them if it's if you guys talk and find that, you know, it's not a good fit that you have other resources and you're open to helping them find that next space. I think that's so amazing. And I think that would also set you apart from so many places because most places will just say, sorry, we don't do that. And then people are flailing going, well, now what do we do? And so I appreciate that you at least attempt to get them to a next step. I think that it depends where your, you know, your heart and soul is. And my heart and soul is to truly help people in the best way that I can and my specialty and the way that I do things. And if I don't feel like it's a good fit or that there's someone that would be better aligned and suit them better, then absolutely, because we're here to help and elevate and uplift each other. And if you're truly wanting a baby, then that is that is the ultimate goal and that is the ultimate gift to give somebody. And that's wonderful. Ashley, thank you so much for your time today, sharing your story and your expertise. I think it's just amazing. I I hope that there are the people who need this will find this episode so that they can get the support that they need. Again, in the description, there's going to be links for you to get connected with Ashley to find her free videos. And if working with her is something you're interested in, you can reach out and connect with her and find out if it is a good fit for you. So Ashley, thank you again. It was so great having you today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tina. It's been a pleasure to be here.